Hallelujah, Christ is risen. This is um, Easter Sunday. This is the day we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. It is um, the most joyful and joyous uh, day on the church calendar because we celebrate the promises of God being fulfilled and the hope of future um, being uh, made manifest. Uh, this morning I have uh, a devotional for you that I want to share. It is um, difficult on days like this uh, that are so rich in theological truth and spiritual truth. We, uh, for preachers to be able to um, really wrap our arms around all the significance of the day. And I'm not going to try to do that today. I'm just going to communicate uh, a short devotional uh, around some of the thoughts uh, that I have relative to this Sunday. Uh, before I, I launch into the things that I uh, have to say, I, I want to pause and uh, pray for our island. This is a really difficult time. We have uh, many, many people in the hospital suffering from COVID. Uh, there are many people vulnerable and uh, sick on the island. We have many people out of work and the thought of another prolonged lockdown has many people discouraged uh, in fear and um, we wanna pray for them. We want to pray for our doctors and medical staff. We want to pray for uh, our political leaders, uh, those people who are governing the island, that God will give them wisdom. And so will you, will you join me in prayer uh, and pray for God's help? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for uh, your kindness. We're so grateful that we can come before you in prayer and we cry out to you, Lord, have mercy upon this island. Lord, have mercy upon the people who live here. We pray, God, that those people who are sick and those people who are vulnerable to catching this disease, this virus, Lord, that you will keep your hand of protection upon them. Lord, we pray for a miraculous recovery for those people who are sick, those people who are in the hospital. We pray, God, for the medical staffs, the doctors, the nurses, those people who are in contact with the, with the patients. Lord, we pray for your hand of protection upon them. God, bless them and give them strength and energy to be able to meet the needs as they have presented themselves. God, we pray for our uh, government, the prime minister, and for the ministers uh, that are active in trying to direct the affairs of this island during this, uh, this very difficult time. God, give them wisdom. Give them supernatural ability. Give them creative insight into how to not only protect the island, but to be able to foster job creation and that the economy will rise once again. Lord, we pray for those people who are uh, without jobs, those people who were just recovering from last year. God, we pray that you will help them. God, that none will go hungry on this island. Help us, Lord, to be able to rise up to uh, those people who have uh, sufficient that they will be able to provide uh, for the needs of other people. That God, no one will go hungry and that people will be able to uh, stay in their homes and that, uh, that there will be uh, a miraculous provision for people. We thank you, God, for this. And Lord, we pray for those people who are discouraged, those people who are afraid. Lord, I pray that you'll give them hope on this most hopeful day. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, we are at the end of Holy Week. It began with last Sunday and the uh, triumphal entry that we celebrated uh, Palm Sunday. And uh, that was a day of celebration 
It was a day that we commemorated uh, people shouting Hosanna, Hosanna. Um, as people were celebrating joyfully and rightfully so, there was a heaviness, I'm sure, that Jesus was carrying. And uh, as he went into this week, he was probed and questioned by the religious leaders and uh, proved to be uh, without sin or guile. Uh, we go into a Monday, Thursday and Good Friday and then um, ultimately now this Sunday, this day of celebration. So if you've been, uh, if you um, are familiar with the story or you've reread it, uh, you've, and if you're very sensitive to the emotion of that uh, and the significance of the things that we have been observing, uh, it's, it's an emotional roller coaster. Um, I know that there are some people that I know, uh, friends who are so sensitive that the very mention of Jesus' suffering brings tears to their eyes. And I love that about them. I love the fact that the price that Jesus paid was not, was not lost on them. Today we, we celebrate, we rejoice, we shout hallelujah, Christ is risen. Um, that Christ is no longer in the grave. And we celebrate, uh, we celebrate the future. Uh, the Good Friday, the, the, the cross, the things that Jesus suffered, in, in, in one way of thinking, looks backwards. Uh, it looks to the sacrifices that were offered up uh, by mankind throughout the, the uh, millennia. The, at the creation and the, the fall of man, um, there were animals that were sacrificed to provide a covering for the shame of humanity in a very, in a very um, tangible way. There was shedding of blood for the covering. And since then, uh, there has always been required the shedding of blood to cover sins. Uh, from from creation and from the fall of man to the worship that was uh, commanded by Moses and the offerings of of sacrifices to the uh, temple, the first temple and the second temple periods, and finally even up to the moments before Jesus was crucified, the cross looked back. It was an answer to those things. That was temporary. That was temporary. But there was a final solution in Jesus' provision for the covering of sins. The resurrection looks forward. It looks uh, to our future, the, the, the time that we will be with Christ, because Christ was raised from the dead, so we have, we have hope for our own resurrection. The resurrection speaks to our future uh, in eternity, in glory with him. But it also speaks of our time here on earth. D did you know that there is resurrection power, the same power, the same dunamis, the same energy that raised Christ from the dead is flowing inside of you? This is what the scripture says, that the same power that is the Holy Spirit, the same power that raised Christ from the dead will, is going to quicken you and it's going to help us in many ways. It's going to help us to live a righteous life, to live a life that pleases God. We are not bound by sin. And the power of addiction can be broken in your life because of that dunamis, that power, the Holy Spirit that is resident within you. I, I don't know if you could really wrap your mind around that, that same energy that brought Jesus to life again, that same life-giving energy, uh, that same life-giving person lives inside of you. The Holy Spirit is 
a, uh, a token of our inheritance of that we, we have in glory, but he also operates in our life to help us to say no to sin and ungodliness, to uncleanness. And we celebrate that today. The Old Testament book of Zechariah um, includes a very vivid language. I, I love the way that the, the New King James Version renders this. It refers to the, the captives that were held in captivity um, as, as they were being released. They have become prisoners of hope. I love that. Prisoners of hope. It's as if uh, they are uh, they are bound by, they are captive by, they are possessed by hope. And those people who are prisoners of hope have hope flowing inside of them, and it splashes on everybody. I, I love that. We are in uh, uh, in a time when we this highland desperately needs hope, and those of us who are English speaking um, expatriates who live here on the island are, in in a way, we're insulated from the severity that is happening into the in the lives of many of the the Curacaoans and Latinos who live here on the island who have had their income um, decimated by uh, uh, by the virus and uh, we stand in a unique position to be able to uh, minister hope I, I encourage you that if there are opportunities to volunteer, to be involved in things in the community, to be able to help, uh, either working in the hospital if you have professional skills in that way, or if you have uh, other abilities to be able to volunteer in, in other ventures uh, on the island, I encourage you to be ready to volunteer, to be able to help this island and the people here that we love. And if you have an opportunity to be able to give, there are charities that are worthwhile and that you know have a level of uh, accountability. Uh, I encourage you to to look into that to be able to give to be able to help people who are on the island. And don't forget that uh, you have the ability to be able to bring Jesus into other people's lives. That is the most important thing. And as you pray for people and encourage them, either either on the streets or just on your knees uh, by your bed, praying on, on behalf of this island, uh, you can be ambassadors of hope to be able to pour hope into people's lives. This island needs a revival, spiritually and economically, uh, and so be a part of that. This morning, if you have uh, found yourself distant from God or perhaps you've never known God in a real and personal way to where you can call him your friend, your father, I invite you to, in this moment now, to give your life to Christ, to give yourself over to the Lord Jesus Christ, to allow yourself to be captive by hope, I'm going to pray a prayer, and I want to invite you to pray with me. A prayer of dedication of your heart to the Lord. Uh, in moments like this, we're reminded of uh, our future and the moment when we leave this life and we stand before the judge of the universe. And he's going to judge you righteously, not based on whether you are a good person most of the time or whether, you know, he just has a heart of compassion. He just loves everybody. So everybody gets in. That's not, that's not how God does things. He's a righteous God and he judges sin. And when you stand before him without a covering for your sin, you will bear the consequences of eternity without him and eternity in hell.
So I invite you, as the scripture says, to put on the Lord Jesus Christ, to allow him to be the covering for your sin so that there be forgiveness and that you will repent of your old ways, that you'll turn from those things and pursue him, to pursue righteousness. Will you do that? Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, in this moment, in this time, we give ourselves afresh to you. Lord, there's a distance between us, and it's not because you've distanced yourself from us, but because we have distanced ourselves from you. And so, Lord, we ask you forgive us. Forgive us of our sins and our transgressions. Lord, as an act of our will, we are making a decision today to turn away from our sin. And those things that have separated us from you, those things that we know that are not right, those things that do not please you, we turn away from those things and we turn our face to seek you. So Lord, we, this morning, no matter how good we've tried to be, we've come up short and we need your righteousness. And so Lord, we want to clothe ourselves in the righteousness of Christ. The Lord, that there will be a covering for us and forgiveness of sin. Lord, thank you for that. We just ask the blood of Jesus to cleanse us and break every chain. The chains of hopelessness, the chains of fear, the chains of a demonic control in our lives. Break those things now by the power that raised Christ from the dead. And Lord, we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, we bless you in the name of the Lord and are so grateful that you've, we've, that you've joined me and joined us uh, together in this uh, time of celebration of the resurrection of Christ. Go in the grace and the strength of the Lord and May the Lord uh, let his face shine upon you, that will be gracious to you and give you peace. In Jesus' name.